Hey everybody, John Peterson from John Peterson Photography here, and I'm coming to you today to introduce a new series that I'm doing called Which One Works. In this series, there are just a, a collection of short videos where I will be critiquing my images, pointing out things that I feel work in an image and don't work in an image. Because, you know, folks, oftentimes it's the little things that make a good image great. And for us as photographers and as artists, it's that attention to detail that makes all the difference in our uh, photography or in our art in general. So this little series is designed to kind of highlight for you some of the things that I look for in my images to select the ones that I think are worthy of processing and publishing. So I'll be releasing regular videos uh, out on this Which One Works and stay tuned for all of them. And please subscribe, please like the channel, do whatever you need to do. I always love hearing for, from you, so leave comments. Um, so here you go with the first video. I hope you enjoy it and thanks for watching. Okay, let's dive right in. Uh, the first shot in Which One Works is recently from, um, I did a workshop down in Bandon, Oregon a couple of weeks ago, and we enjoyed some amazing conditions, which is rare for Bandon. Uh, you can see off in the distance, there's still a marine layer hanging offshore, but we got this beautiful evening light at sunset. And my big lesson for the workshop was uh, oftentimes it's the half an hour to 45 minutes before sunset where light can be really dramatic and really accentuate uh, the coastline. And it's when I like to work a lot. The actual sunset times themselves, I guess I'm so used to this marine layer that kills the actual sunset that the I, I'm not that concerned about the actual sunset time it's the half an hour before sunset where you get this side light and it's gold and it's just beautiful light and so that's kind of what we had on this night and uh you know as i walked along the beach at bandon um, i was really trying to pick up on some of the small details in the scene yes it's a big beautiful wonderful landscape but for me, I love to include some of the smaller details in these shots. And for this particular image, I noticed these uh, patterns in the sand, these basically lines or leading lines or curving lines. And so I set up a shot to, um, to shoot these with some of the sea stacks in the back. One of the challenges of shooting at Bandon is you oftentimes get overlap and uh, you can see how this C stack overlaps the C stack in the back. And that's just sort of a, you, you try to minimize them, but it's just sort of what happens when you're abandoned because there's so many offshore rocks that it's oftentimes hard to get all the separation that you want. So yeah, I would ding myself on that particular aspect of this, but knowing the location, that was probably the best I can do. And besides, you know, with this shot, more emphasis is placed on the lines in the sand and the quality of the light on the sand than the sea stacks in the back. If this image was about sea stacks, then I'd have more of a problem with that overlap. But because this shot is about the sand, I don't mind those overlaps nearly as much. And you know, with the sun starting to dip low in the horizon, I was starting to notice the shadows that were developing along these, these ridges of sand. And you can see them. And these, you know, the, the darks and the lights are essential to photographs. And so I wanted to play up the shadows as best as I could. So I found, a, I, I found a spot where I really liked the lines. I thought they had a nice curve and a nice shape to them. They were deep enough. So the, the shape of these, um, 
uh, riffles were accentuated enough. You know, as you go off into the distance, um, they shallowed up a lot, so they weren't as pronounced. So I tried to find a very pronounced area. And, you know, what I found, too, was this wonderful little bit of seaweed right in the front. Great. All right. I got a, I got a cool little bit of foreground interest. I got these leading lines going off into the back. Um, you know, so I set up and I took the shot and I liked it. But then I started looking at this and started thinking about it and thought, well, you know, I better shoot this vertically. So that's what I did is I shot this vertically as well as horizontally. Here's the vertical shot. The other thing to mention, too, is that I had my camera tilted down a little bit because and that stretches and and uh, really accentuates the immediate foreground in the shot. And so you can see even more so in this vertical shot how the foreground right around the seaweed, that area, looks really large compared to the rest of the scene. And that's because I was tilting my camera down using a wide-angle lens. So I've got a horizontal and a vertical, and the question is which one works and or which one works better. So let me go back. Here's the horizontal. And here's the vertical. To me, my answer is the vertical one works far better than the horizontal. The horizontal is not bad. It's a nice landscape shot. It's basic. It's straightforward. There's a lot of visual interest. But this vertical one really does the trick for me for what I was wanting to accomplish in this shot, which was have this beautiful foreground, the sand, the color of the light on the sand, the leading lines taking you off into the back of the frame. They're more accentuated in this vertical shot than in the horizontal. Everything just seems to flow and feel better. Besides the obvious leading lines of the sand, look at the direction of the seaweed. Again, another subtle leading line pushing you to the back of the frame. Look at the sea stacks in the back. They're vertical as well. So by orienting my camera vertically, I'm more harmonious and more in line with all of the elements in the composition. Let me go back to the horizontal one. The horizontal one's nice, but I, I just, I don't get that sense of movement from immediate foreground to the background like I do with the vertical shot. So shoot things both ways when, when you're a little bit undecided in the field, but more importantly, read your subject because your subject and the story that you're trying to tell will oftentimes uh, signal to you which orientation you should shoot. And in this case, I had these long vertical lines and I had vertical subjects. So that told me I needed to shoot this in a vertical orientation. So there you go. There's episode one of Which One Works. And stay tuned for more of these. I'll be pumping these out every now and again. But uh, hope you enjoyed it. And uh, stay tuned and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.